We're looking at lead code number 912. Uh, it's sorting an array and it's exactly as the name implies. We're going to sort an array of numbers. And we're going to use a, a method called merge sort in today's video on how to sort this. It is a divide and conquer algorithm and it's one of the more efficient ways to sort an array. Uh, this is an interesting algorithm. It uses a divide and conquer strategy. It also uses recursion. So if you're not familiar with recursion, this may seem a little bit, little bit difficult, but I still encourage you to watch the video because it will help you better understand recursion in and of itself. Uh, and so let's jump into the conceptual. And the way we're going to do this, I think it's easier to actually just look at the algorithm before we jump into conceptually what it's actually doing uh, in the code. So here we have a function, merge sort, and it's going to take in an array here. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to set a base case that if the array length is less than or equal to 1, we're just going to go ahead and return the array. So that'll be our base case. And the idea is, is we want to split the array in half, a left side and a right side, and we want to recursively call merge sort until we get to the base case. And as it goes back up the stack, we're going to merge the left and the right arrays and those will be sorted. And the, the, um, the left and the right will both be sorted arrays, and then we'll merge that as we go up and up, uh, up the stack. So let's, let's actually jump into code and, and kind of conceptually, um, conceptually map this out so this makes a little more sense, okay? So one second here, let's just, let's just shrink this here. And what we'll do is we'll just set this right over here and move it to the side. And then we'll go ahead and work with this input array right here. Okay, so what we want to do here, the idea is, is that we have our base case, if array.length is less than or equal to 1, return array. And then we are going to find the mid, okay, so we're going to take the length of this array right here, split it in two, or divide it in two and floor it. And then we're going to recursively call into our, into our uh, uh, main function the left side of the array, so we're going to slice it from zero to mid, and the right side of the array, which is going to take in the mid and then just go to the end of the array. So what this is going to look like is we're going to get a tree, something that's going to look very similar to a tree, and we're going to get this array right here, five, uh, one, and one on the left, and then zero, zero, and two on the right. Okay, so that's going to be our first recursive call. Now we're going to recursively call left. Uh, this is going to keep on going down. It's going to keep on splitting this array up because we're, we're going to go down until we recursively go down the stack until we hit our base case. So on the left side, this is going to take the left uh, number, which is going to be 5. Okay, and then we're going to get our right, which is going to be 1 and 1. Now, 5 is good. 5 hits our base case, so the left side of 5 on that particular uh, function call is okay, but then this is going to go down one more, and we're going to get 1 and 1 at, at, at the base level there. Okay. Similarly here on the right side, we're going to get uh, 0 here, and then we're going to get uh, 0 and 2 on this side right over here. Okay, and then the left side is good. We hit our base case, and on the right, we're gonna get zero and two on the left and right, and it's gonna hit that base case. So what's gonna happen is, is that zero is gonna make a call, and it's gonna hit, uh, it's gonna hit its base case, so it's gonna return this zero for the left, and then it's gonna return the right, and then it's gonna go down to this return right here, the merge, okay, and what merge is going to do, it takes in two numbers or two arrays and just merges them together. That's all it's doing. So I'll just kind of quickly uh, detour here and just give you an example. Let's say we have we have two sorted arrays. We have um, uh, for this example, we'll use something like one, one, and five, and then we have uh, zero, zero, and two. Okay, 
So let's say we have two sorted arrays. All merge is doing is that you're gonna have a pointer here and a pointer here, and it's gonna say which one is the smaller number. It's zero, that's gonna get pushed into a result, and this will increment up one. It's gonna ask again, which is smaller, this zero or this one, it's zero. It's gonna push that into the result, and this is gonna increment up to two. It's gonna ask again, which one is smaller, it's one, one gets pushed up, it gets incremented here, one gets pushed in, gets incremented here, two gets pushed in, and then five gets pushed in. And then it returns that, okay? So at, that, at this bottom right there, that merge helper function, that's all it's doing. It's just taking two sorted arrays, merging them together, and returning that um, uh, final array. Okay, so in the context of what we're doing here, just get this off of here just to keep it clean. We are, we are returning this two and zero, which is gonna come back sorted, okay? And now we're gonna have these two arrays here. We're gonna have zero and two and zero, and this is gonna actually return very similar to what we have up here at the top. It's sorted, okay? Here, this is gonna return one and one, and we're gonna have one and one and five, and then this is actually gonna be, these are gonna sort these together. It's gonna merge these two arrays together, and what we're gonna actually have is one, uh, one, and five, okay? And now you can see here we have two sorted arrays, uh, one, one, and five, and zero, zero, and two, and then we're just gonna call merge on those two arrays, and then on the final return call, we're gonna get our correct answer, which is going to be zero, zero, one, one, two, and five. Okay, and the array is sorted. So that's the idea behind it. And now, just to kind of make, clarify the time and space complexity, we are creating new space with this because every time we use dot slice, okay, we create a new array. We're, we're copying, we're basically taking a copy or a scan of that array and returning it back. So we are creating new space. But if we look at the time complexity, how many function calls are we doing? Well, we're, we're doing a recursive tree. Okay, so how many levels of this tree do we have? We have, let's use a different color here. We have level one, which is the um, top level where our input goes in. Then we're splitting it. We have our second level. We have our third level and our fourth level. So relative to the size of the input, if we split it in half on every function call, it's gonna be log n. It's just gonna be the height of the tree, which is how many levels we're gonna have. Then we have to ask ourselves, well, at each level, how many n operations are we doing, right? Well, on each level, we're performing merge on a, a split of the array. So you can see that at each level, we're going to have n operations. Okay, so when we do the split here, we're gonna have n operations. Here, we're gonna have n operations. These are base cases. So you can see that on every level, we're doing n operations. So log n is the height of the tree, and then we're doing n operations on every single level of log n. So our time complexity here is going to be n times uh, log n, okay, or n log n. And that's gonna be our time, and what about space complexity? Our space complexity, well, we have to create a new array because we're using dot slice, so we are scanning that array making a carbon copy of it on each level. So our space complexity is going to be uh, O of N. Okay, because it's going to be linear relative to the size of the input. And so that is the basic idea behind it. Um, and so we can jump into the code, but before we do that, I just also wanna, I also wanna go over the merge, the merge helper function. So let's go ahead and clear Let's clear this out and let's just kind of go over this merge, uh, this merge helper function. Let me just kind of make this bigger so we have the code here to reference. And at the bottom here we have this this merge helper function. And what's exact? What exactly is going on there? So what we want to think of is let's say we have two arrays, okay? And we have array one. We'll just give it the values of one, one, and two. And then we have array two, which we can give it the values of zero, zero, and five. So they're both sorted. Okay, that's important. Both of those arrays have to be sorted. 
Now, all we're doing with this merge is we're going to loop through uh, these two. We're going to keep on looping until both of these two arrays are empty. Okay. So, for example, let's say we put a pointer here, and we can call this i, and we point up, put a pointer here, and we can call this j. Okay. And we can say which one is smaller. Is the value at i smaller or is the value at j smaller? The value at j is smaller, so we have a result variable and we just go ahead and push in the value at j which is zero and then we're going to go ahead and increment j and we ask ourselves again which one is smaller the value at j or the value at i the value at j is smaller so we're going to push it into the result and then increment j and now we ask which one is smaller i or j um, i is smaller so we're going to push in i which is one increment i we're going to push in one again increment i we're going to push in two it goes out of the range and now we do have this this uh, extra number in j so we just make sure if j is not empty just push whatever's left in j into that result and respectively we do we would do the same thing for i if if i if j goes to the end first then whatever's left over in i we would just want to go ahead and push that all into the result array so that's all we're doing with merge Okay, so that's merge sort. Let's jump into the code. And then also one more thing. If you look at this, this would be a linear time operation because we're going over every single one of our elements in the input. Okay, so that's where the n part of the n log n is coming in is that we, on every level of our recursion tree, we have to, we have to do this linear operation. Okay, so here, the, the main function code is actually not too complicated. We'll just start with our base case. If nums.length is less than or equal to 1, return nums. Okay, now we want to uh, go ahead and get our mid, so let mid equal floor, and we'll just do nums.length divided by 2. And then we want to get our left, and here we're just going to rec recursively call sort array, and then we're going we're gonna to slice that array on the left side and pass it into our main function. So we can do nums.slice, start at zero and end at mid without including it. And then we have our right and we can call sort array and slice nums and mid. And when we just put in one parameter uh, or one argument, it's just gonna go to the end of the array. It's gonna start at mid inclusive and then go to the end. Mid on the end, the second argument here is not inclusive. So we're going zero to the index right before whatever mid is, and then we're starting at mid and going to the end. So we're going to get the correct left and right positions of, of that array. And then we're just going to return merge of left and right. Okay, so that's the main function. It's actually not too complicated. And then we just have this uh, merge function which takes in two arrays. We'll call it array one and array two. Okay, and now what we wanna do is we wanna have a result, set it to an empty array, and then we'll just have an i pointer. So let i equals zero, let j equals zero. And these will, these will be respective to the values in array one and array two. So i will map to array one and j will map to array two. And now we just want to say while uh, i is less than array one dot length and j is less than array two dot length, we just want to do this comparison. We just want to say if array one at i is less than or equal to array two at j, then we just want to push that value of in array one, the lesser value of the two, into the result. We can say result.push array one at i, and then we increment i. Okay, else we just want to push whatever's in j into the result. So we can do result.push array two at j, and then we increment j. Okay. So now we're, we're almost done, but we just want to make sure that if there's anything left over, because if the lengths are different, let's say there's six numbers in um, array two, but only three numbers in array one, 
once array one gets out of range, then we just want to take whatever's left in array two and just push that into the result. Okay, so we're going to just say while i is less than array one dot length, uh, result dot push array one at i, and then we'll increment i until it goes out of range. Same thing with j, while j is less than array two dot length, we're going to push that into the result. and then increment j until it goes out of range. Okay, and then we just return the result. And let me just kind of zoom out here so you can see all of the code and what's happening here. Okay, so we have our main function here. We're gonna call merge as it gets to the bottom of the, the tree and then as it goes back up the call stack, you're going to get your left array and your right array, and then it's going to return merge back up the call stack. And th this, this, this can be very hard to get your head around if you haven't like, looked at recursion. This can seem very weird. But what I would suggest is if, if this is not making any sense, just get a pen and paper, you know, use the inputs they have here as the example, or just you know, look at like eight or ten different random numbers, and with a pen and paper, write it all out. Write out the tree, really look at how it's going back up the call stack, and it'll start making more sense. Um, and it's important to do that because this type of question comes up all the time. Like recursion is, is you know, a very important thing when you're looking at these coding interview questions. Okay, let's go ahead and run this, make sure everything works. Okay, and we'll submit it. And yeah, and so you can see the performance boost that we get using a divide and conquer. You can see the runtime for this is 160 milliseconds, but here I believe this was selection sort that I was uh, testing, and you can see it's 5,104. So you get almost like a 20x performance boost by using n log n versus n squared. So this is a, a more performant way of sorting, um, sorting an array. Okay, so that is lead code number 912, sort array with a focus on merge sort. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I do have many other sorting. We have bubble sort, insertion sort, selection sort, merge sort, and quick sort. So I, I encourage you to check out the other videos as well. Okay, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you all on the next one.